Crystal Amundsen. I am a licensed clinical professional counselor and a registered play therapist. And I wanted to talk a little bit today about parenting in a pandemic. Um, and more specifically, the idea that calm may not necessarily be connected. Um, I think sometimes we feel like as parents, we need to put on our game face we need to be calm. We need to have all the answers in order for our kids to grow into functional adults. And what we're actually finding is the opposite is a little bit true. We need to teach our kids what it is to deal with difficult emotions. Um, and I feel like a pandemic is a great time to practice because as we're experiencing um, distress, fear, grief. Let's just take the pressure away that we need to hide that from our kids or we need to put on a fake face. And let's start to get curious about what are some developmentally appropriate ways that we can start to introduce them to some coping skills for these big hard feelings that everyone experiences. The more tools we can give our kids to handle difficult emotions, the better. Um, so the, the specific tool I want to talk about is emotional regulation. And let's think about it this way. If the temperature is going up in the room, perhaps because I can't get the homeschooling app to work, um, and the temperature is going up, I'm getting more agitated. Emotional regulation is my ability to recognize that the temperature is rising, decide that that's getting uncomfortable and that I need to do something about that. And then just like this thermostat clicks on and regulates the temperature, my coping skills and my awareness can click on to regulate my anger. Okay. And so that's, that's what regulation is. Emotional dysregulation, a great way to think about that is a thermometer. So if the heat is rising because we can't get the internet to work and the homeschool assignment is due today, a thermometer is just going to say, whew, it's getting hot in here. Whew. And that's emotional dysregulation. Okay. And so we can be, we can be angry or we can be scared and we can still be the thermostat for our kids. Um, and so another way to think about this is driving. The very When you showed up to take your driver's test and get your driver's license, that was not the first time you had been in a car. Um, you had probably spent years in the passenger seat watching how grown-ups in your life navigated seat belts and stoplights and oncoming traffic. And so you learned so much about what it was to operate a vehicle before you ever were in charge of operating the vehicle. And emotional regulation is very much a skill that we have the opportunity to teach our kids. And if the first time our kids experience anger or embarrassment is when they're in the driver's seat of that emotion, there's a really good chance they're going to get overwhelmed really quickly. And it's a slippery slope. If we're best intentions wanting to put on a good face for our kids and always be positive and never cry in front of them, that comes from a place of compassion and care, but it robs our kids of the opportunity to drive the car. Because if they can see me regulating through anger or confusion about homeschool, they're going to be more likely to do the same when they're struck by that emotion. Maybe even about homeschool. Um, there's a couple of research studies that are out there that are really starting to drive home this idea that calm is not necessarily connected. And our goal as parents... Um, is to be safe and to be connected. And so there's actually a research study out there about emotional intelligence. They split teachers into two groups, um, did a couple things to make one group be the bad mood group. Another group was the good mood group. They gave both groups the same assignment to grade. And there was a one to two letter grade difference between those two groups. And so not only did their mood impact their objective grading, 
when asked about it later, 90% of them said, my mood had nothing to do. I would have graded that the same way if I had been in a different mood. You guys, our emotions completely impacts our decision making and how we engage the world and the relationships around us, including our little humans. And we're not even aware of it. And so if we can be present to our experiences, that's going to give us a more accurate view of the relationships and the world around us. Another super interesting study was two groups of mothers. One group was asked to be honest about their stress levels in front of their kids. And okay, we're talking developmentally appropriate, honest, right? So I can tell my seven-year-old, I had a really hard day at work today. I'm feeling, I'm feeling tired and I'm feeling sad. I am not going to tell her the ins and outs and the very not developmentally appropriate information about my work day, right? So, um, but Back to the study. So group of moms asked to be honest about stress levels with their kids, while the other group of moms were asked to game face, fake it till you make it, make sure you're calm. And guess what the research found? Which group of kids do you think was more stressed? The second group. The kids, because their thermometers felt the heat in their room, but their parent, their safe person was acting like the temperature was fine. That incongruence is more stressful at times for kids than the actual experience of anger or sadness or whatever stress is is building up the temperature in the room. So what do we do about that? Um, the quickest, there's a lot of other experts that are going to be on on this YouTube series. And so I just encourage you to dig into the resources available in our community. Um, but one real quick strategy I want you to think about is, um, name it to tame it. Daniel Siegel is a leader in the field of pediatric neurology. And he gives us this really basic strategy to help regulate our emotions and our kids name it to tame it. So going back to that homeschooling example, the internet is down, the app's not working, we thought we posted it in the one spot and we didn't post it. So when I'm doing this, my kid doesn't know if I'm irritated with them for not listening or doing it wrong or if I'm irritated with the situation. So name it to tame it would be, ooh, I am feeling so frustrated because I can't figure out how to do this right. (sighs) Name it to tame it. That immediately does two things. It, It names it for your child so they can understand, oh, that person ran a red light. Oh, mom's feeling mad. They can start to understand this is what happens when big feelings happen. The second thing it does for my own little brain is it takes the emotional part that's feeling angry and out of control about this assignment and it connects it to the executive functioning part. This part, the angry part, does not have words. And so by putting words to that angry part, it immediately calms it down. It immediately makes more sense. Oh, this thing, this thing's called anger. So name it to tame it. You can, you can just do an internet search if that's a tactic or you want more resources related to that. Um, and hang in there. When we know better, we do better. And in the meantime, we just do the best we can in the moment.